on and put those hands together all over this place. If you don't mind right now, could you stand to your feet and give God the best praise and know how to give him in this place? Because we know if it had not been for Jesus who was on our side, we don't know where we would be, amen? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and put those hands together. Come on and clap them like you're going to clap them off. Because we know we serve a mighty God. Come on, if you know it, come on and help us say it real quick. Say, we serve a mighty God. Come on, say it again. Say, we serve a mighty God. Say, we're going to give him praise. Say, we're going to give him glory. We're going to give him honor on the day. <laughs> we're going to jump right in. Is that all right? Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Can y'all say it real quick? Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Come on, one more time. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. First goes like this right Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above. Peace. 
We serve mighty God. We serve heaven and earth adore the mighty God. We serve what a mighty God. One more time. What a mighty God. We serve. Oh, oh. Heaven, heaven, earth adore the mighty God. What's our right here? Say all glory, all glory, all honor, all praise, all praise, all glory, all honor, all praise, all praise, all glory. say neighbor I don't know about you but I'm excited to be in the house of God on this morning amen come on you say it like you really mean it say neighbor I don't know about you but I'm happy to be alive and in God's house on this morning I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship, yeah, and we'll go sailing through Wait the air. I'm going to take a trip on that good Like that right now, come on. On that good old gospel ship, and we'll go And when my ship comes in, I'm going to leave this old world of sin. Yeah, hey, Lord, and we'll go. To cry sometimes.
Bendigo. Cross this great gulf over there and meet somebody else. to be with us, and we hope and pray that you have come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, just a few announcements before we get into the morning's message. Uh, all small groups will start back this week. That means tomorrow at 6.30 uh, p.m. The men will meet for Men's Monday. Uh, that will be in person here at the church, and then Tuesday is online, Zoom. Tuesday night teaching, we will start at 7 p.m. And then Wednesday at 6.30 or 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock here at the church, the women will have Women's Wednesday. And so, and of course, Morning Glory is Sunday at 10 a.m. And that's uh, on Zoom. So I hope and pray that you become a part of one of those small groups. And if you don't do that, at least have some personal time with you and God. Where you read the scripture and pray. I promise you it will help you. Uh, it will help you. You don't get enough just coming to church uh, to make it through the whole week. Uh, just like uh, you don't have enough to eat on Sunday evening that will last you to Saturday evening. You got to eat every day. And so please spend some time with God. I promise you it will bless your soul. Uh, I hope and pray you had an amazing Thanksgiving. Uh, you spent some time with family and friends. Uh, we are now in the heat of the holiday season. And so let me say this. If you are, if you are struggling with something, uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, if your anxiety is greater than it has been, if your depression is taking its way to the wrong direction, reach out. You can call me at any time of the day, any time of the day. Reach out to someone. Don't suffer in darkness by yourself. What the enemy wants to do is isolate you. If he isolates you, he can terminate you. Uh, but when you pull that thing out in the light, all of us, hear me, all of us have mental health. All of us do. And sometimes our mental health is off a little bit. Now, most of us, we can fix that by sleeping uh, by doing something with somebody we love, by talking, but every now and then you need more than prayer. You need a pill. You need more than the altar. You need a couch. And so I, I want you to be around. I don't want you to do anything uh, that will harm you and destroy your family. So please reach out and, and just understand that everybody goes through dark days, but you don't have to go through it by yourself. All right. And so we are in the holiday season. We have 30 kids that we have adopted for Angel Tree. Uh, the gift is $25. If you want to adopt one of these kids, Angel Tree kids are kids who have at least one parent incarcerated. Uh, and so please see Reverend Stephanie Peake. And also, uh, please put it on your calendar about our Christmas fellowship. It will be December the 17th between the hours of 4 and 6. There is a sign-up sheet out there in the vestibule, and uh, there are some invitations where you can RSVP uh, online. We just need to know the head count. This is totally free. We want to just celebrate 
uh, Christmas with you. There's going to be plenty of food, games, fun, and gifts. And so we hope to see you. It's going to be at uh, the Rob Building right there in the front of the YMCA. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And I hope and pray that uh, you come out and bring your family members. Again, just sign up so we can get a head count as to how many will be there. All right, grab your Bibles if you would, stand with me. Grab your Bibles, stand uh, as we turn to Job, Job chapter 2, Job chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 3, Job chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. And said, the devil said, and skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely cuss you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And he took for him a, a pot sheared with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. I wish I had another church I would tell you to look at every woman in here and say you look like, no we're not going to do that. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Just for a little while this afternoon before you take your seat, I want to talk to you from the subject, a season of suffering. You may be seated, a season of suffering. I am quickly learning as I get older keep my judgmental comments to myself. Because what I found that people are quick to give you advice when you are going through difficult times, difficult situation in your life, but that same advice they won't use when they are going through. Life is funny. It is. Just when you think everything is up, you look around, it's going down. And most of us, I would imagine, who are believers, you probably consider yourself to be strong in the faith. But I think many times we measure our spiritual fortitude by how often we come to church, if we give in church, or our moral uprightness. But I would suggest to you that you won't know just how strong you are in the faith until you have went through a season of suffering. You, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know if you will continue to worship. You don't know if you're going to continue to go to church. If you go through a season where everything is falling apart. 
I'm not talking about just one bad event. I'm talking about when you have marital problems, when you have financial problems, when you have emotional problems, when you have unemployment problems, when your body is aching, when your friend has left you, when money is not in the bank and folks you love begin to die. Sometime in that moment, I believe you begin to question if this God is really good, yeah, you can go through one little incident and bounce back. But what if you had to go through a year of sickness, a year of being on your back, unable to move? I, I tell you, I, I, I hope, hear me, I, I hope that I would be the one that said, in spite of it, I'll still praise him. But can I tell you, I'm human too. And when things go on too long, it challenges my faith. And I come to tell you there's somebody that's listening to me. You, you're still here, but you're barely holding on. You, you, you don't want to tell nobody because we created this environment in church where we come and pretend like we got it all together. But there's somebody in here, you're holding on to the last thread. And you're saying, God, if you don't do something and do something quick, I don't know how long I can last. Because the truth of the matter, when you get into a season of suffering, people will endure you for a moment. But if you stay down too long, they start walking away. Yeah, y'all don't believe it. Live long enough. Get into the right situation and you will discover who you have on your side. Because when you get to the place where you can do nothing for nobody, you will discover who you have on your side. Because you can't count your friends when you're on the top. You can only discover your friends when you're on the bottom. Your friends are those ones that don't want nothing from you but want everything for you. Is there anybody in this house, thank God that you have had at least two of those kinds of friends. Job, Job, on the other hand, didn't. Job, Job, the Bible says in chapter 1, was an up right man who feared God and shunned evil and yet in one day he loses seven children he loses all of his wealth now in chapter 2 we find out that he's also losing his wife chapter 3 and 4 his friends come and pretty much accuse him of being a wicked man. So he loses his friends. In chapter 2, he also loses his health. Now he has boils oozing with pus sitting there in the ashes. And I imagine Job is questioning, why me? Why this? And why so much? Job, Job and the story of Job and the book of Job, you can't go into the book of Job and not deal with the issue of suffering. Because we have not done a good job in helping our people to navigate suffering. We, 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 we teach them about shouting, but not about suffering. Because preaching on shouting gets big offering, but when you talk about suffering, I, I may not get nothing in the offering basket, but that's all right. But the truth of the matter, if you live in this world, Jesus himself says you will endure something. And I come to tell you that sometimes life is unfair and sometimes it seems like nobody else is getting it but you. You question yourself, God, what have I done to deserve this? But one of the things Job teaches us that sometimes suffering is not attached to your sinfulness. Yeah, you should have wrote that down. Sometimes it's not about you sin and you're paying for a sin. Sometimes you're just going through, here it is, because your suffering is your assignment. 
You, you, let, let, me, let me say it one more time. Sometimes your suffering is your assignment. For Job, it was his assignment to go through the suffering because God knew that he could trust Job with the suffering. And sadly, none of you, none of you in here probably have to worry. You ain't going to never go through this. Because God can't trust you with nothing. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got a church full of foul weather Christians. Yeah, yeah, God, God start dumping stuff on you, you stop coming to church. Yeah, you, you get laid off your job, you quit worshiping. You get mad at the preacher, you stop giving. But there are a few of us in there are few of us in here that's a remnant who come to the place that come what may, God. There's nothing in the world that can happen to me that I will forget you and curse you and die. I will never let go of your hand. Chapter 1, chapter 1, we're introduced to this scene. And we have hindsight. Job does not have it. He does not have the conversation that we have and that we get to peep into between the devil and God. God tells him, have you tried my servant Job? The devil says, the only way Job served you is because you've given him everything. Take it away. He'll curse you to your face and die. The Lord said, go ahead and take it. Kills his three daughters, kills his seven sons, takes all of his cattle, all his wealth. In chapter 1, I think verse 32, it says, and Job worshiped. And Job Worship. Only some people in here who have ever lost a child knows the challenge of being able to worship God after you have looked into the casket of your child. But Job got to the place where he had lost everything, but he worshiped God and he credited no sin toward God. In other words, he says, God, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And here you are. Here you are in your season. Maybe it's not going well. Maybe it's not going well, but you just decided, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like praising. I don't even feel like going to church this morning. It rained this morning. Well, I come to tell you, worship should not be about your feelings. Your attendance to church should have nothing to do with your feelings. It should come from a place that's far deeper than your emotions. That I'm connected to a God and I'm connected to God's people. And I want to come and let God know I thank you. I thank you that what I went through didn't make me crazy. I thank you that what I went through didn't make me bitter and nasty and make me an ugly person. God, I thank you that I went through it and I got through it and it didn't change me. I had a dear friend of mine, y'all know him, Pastor Splon. He ended up having brain surgery. And I, I, I only talked to my wife about this, didn't even tell him. He probably listened to the message. But I, I, I prayed that when he had, sur when he had surgery, that it would not change who he was. I didn't want to lose the person of who he was. I didn't want to lose that sweet spirit that he had, and it didn't. And I thank God for that because sometimes people who have brain surgery, it changes their personality. They become different people. And I can tell you, you don't have to go through brain surgery to have your personality change. Sometimes you can go through a traumatic experience and it'll change who you are. And now you walk around always mad and angry and cantankerous. But anybody in here thank God that you went through it, but you got through it. It was hard. It was difficult, but you made it. Joe made it. And now here it is in chapter 2. The devil comes again. I satisfy. He says skin for skin. He says any man will give everything he has for his own life. And God tells him listen, he's in your hand but spare his life. And now Joe will be stricken with this sickness and now his wife his wife who's supposed to bring comfort, his wife who should be there through sickness and in death, the wife that should stay there until the very end, 
comes and tells him, Job, are you still trying to hold on to your integrity? Won't you just curse God and die? It's tempting Job to do exactly what the devil wants. It, it, I know nobody's been through this. When you, you had to go through the most difficult time in your life and your support system were your accusers. Where the, those who should come in and aid you and remind you of the goodness of God, they are the one that's coming and dumping on you in this weak moment. She says, curse God and die. And Job looks at it and says, you talk like a foolish woman. He says, shall we only accept good from God and not adversities? Job unlocks something that maybe we miss, that our perception of God and our expectation of God has a lot to do with our response to God. If you see God in a particular way in which God has not revealed himself in scripture and when God acts against what you believe he should, then we get angry at him. But God never promised us that we wouldn't have to endure suffering. God never promised us that it would not get difficult down here. God never said that things wouldn't get challenging. He only promised that you would never have to go through it by yourself. So now Job says, there's no way I'm going to turn from God. Job, as a matter of fact, says, though he slay me. <laughs> though he slay me, yet will I. Have you made it there with God? That your love of God is not based on your conditions? No, your circumstances in life? And even though it seems as if God is not moving in this season of suffering, even though it seems like God is not turning things around, have you come to the place where you have said, God, in spite of it all, I won't let go of your hand. Because I don't know about some of you, but I've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And I just believe that God has not brought me this far to leave me. And if God brought me to it, is there anybody in this house know that God will bring you through it? God will not leave you in the midst of it by yourself, but God will give you the strength to endure. We don't, we don't have it here, but I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering what is God, what is God thinking as Job is there who have lost everything even lost his health and lost his wife, but he is still talking about how much he loves God. <laughs> Devil don't want it to come out. <laughs> Josh, that you hitting the keyboard? I got to blame somebody. Check one, two. Okay, where was I? Job, Job now, he's, he's there scraping himself, scraping himself. And he's decided, you know what? God is still God. And God is still good. Here's the thing I want you to understand what Job reveals. That sometimes suffering has a way of revealing to you a deeper understanding of who God is of who you are and who your friends are. There's, there's nothing like getting to the place where all of the things, watch this, all of the things that are distractions in our life and we got to deal with ourselves, what we think, what we feel, and what we believe. Most of us never get to that place because your life is filled with distractions. You have noise that you don't have to deal with what you think about. You, you, you do certain things because you don't want to have to wrestle 
with what's going on on the inside of you. So, so you watch a lot of television. You stay online. You, you, you make sure you get all kind of likes because you don't want to have to deal with you. Anybody know how it feels when the power goes off? Huh? You, you, you find out just how addicted you are to some of that stuff. You, you ain't sat in the darkness in a long time. The last time you sit up in a dark room and just dealt with what you were thinking. Most of us are running from our thoughts. But what happens when you get sick and you can't get out of bed? What happens when you got to sit there in the midst of what you're going through and wrestle with who you really are? Now, you no longer can put on the facades. You, you no longer can cover under the mantle of coming to church. Now you got to deal with who you really are with God. You're going to be challenged to find out where your faith lies. How do I get, how do I get out of this place, God, when I no longer have all the little stuff that I used to have to get me to sleep at night? Y'all don't want to talk, do you? Yeah, I, I, I don't want to wrestle with me. I, I don't want to get lost in my own mind. But what happens when you're locked there and you got nowhere else to go but your own thoughts? Job is here and he realized that God has done this. God has allowed this. God has allowed this and the way it looks and Chapter 2 here where we are, it looks like Job is, even though it's difficult for him, but it looks like he's managing it. Come on now. Chapter 1, he worshiped when he loses his children. Chapter 2, he tells his wife, you're a fool. Should we not accept only good from God and not adversity? But here's the thing. Job wasn't dealing with an incident. He was dealing with a season of suffering. And it would be cool if chapter 2 ends... And God removes all of the weight, but it doesn't. He has to go to chapter 3. He has to go to chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, all the way to chapter 42 before anything changes. And most of us probably would do pretty cool in chapter 2. But can you hold on for 42 chapters? Can you hold on when everybody else have walked away? Everybody else have decided you deserve what you're going through. That you got some stuff hidden in your life. You just getting back what you already done to somebody else. What happens when everybody is gone and you still got chapters left? <laughs> you got to make it to chapter 42. It's just chapter 10. And your friends have already left, your wife has already left, and you're still sick and still don't have it. Job faith begins to waver. He begins to question the character of this God. How, how God, then, could you allow this to happen to me? God, what have I done to deserve this? I, I, I dread the day that I was born. So he begins to have a strange conversation with God. He says, if a man die, shall he live again? Can you hide me in the grave until this pass? Job now is shifting and moving into a place of depression. Because I don't care how holy you are. When you get in a season of suffering, all of us have a tendency to start wrestling with depression. And I dare say even wrestling with the thought of suicide. When you get to thinking that the pain is so great that death would be better. And I know some of you sane people out here saying, I'll never get to that. You ain't never been through it yet. You ain't, you ain't never been there where the pain can't stop, where medicine don't work anymore, where alcohol don't get you to sleep at night. You wrestling and you tossing and turning. I come to tell you it can get to that place when you enter into a season of suffering. You just got to realize that this God that we serve, 
he got you. That even though the suffering is happening, can you write this down? Suffering does not excuse you from serving. Just because you're going through, it does not mean that God still don't want to use you. Just because you're going through the most difficult time in your life, you are still a child of God, and God still has an expectation on you. You can't excuse yourself because you're going through. Because the reality is everybody in this room, you're going through something. We may be at a different level. You're able to manage it, but all of us are going through something. And so you got to learn how to say God in spite of it. If I can't walk, God, I'll serve you with my hands. If I can't move my hands, God, I'll serve you with my lips. God, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to worship you until I die. I come to tell you the quickest way of getting out of your suffering is to go through it with worship. When you learn how to worship God, it makes your God bigger and your situation smaller. Job, Job gets to the place, he says, God, if you slay me yet, what I'll trust in. I'm done. I'm done. Verse 42 comes. And the Bible says, Job finally gets to the place where he prays for his friends. The friends <laughs> who left me. The friends who talked about me. The friends who accused me of being a wicked man when I had done nothing. The friends that I trusted to be there. So here's the thing. Job's body and the pulse that was oozing out of it was not as worse as the pulse that was oozing out of his heart. Because hatred... And unforgiveness is worse than anything your body can go through. It's a cancer that eats you from the inside out. And though Job was an upright man and a righteous man, God knew that Job had some issues in his heart that he had yet to address. What we don't want to talk about is that we can come to church. We can sing, we can worship, we can preach, we can do all those things and still have hatred in our hearts. So we go through all the motions, but you know you're not right. But when Job got to the place, hey, he says, God, forgive them. Forgive them. And the Bible says God not only healed him, but God gave him double for his trouble. All I come to tell you, when you're going through your season of suffering, stay with God. Don't allow what people do or don't do to cause you to tear a rift between you and your God. Learn to trust that if everybody leave, that God won't forsake you. When you're there in the midnight hour crying, God is right there with you. Is there anybody can testify to that? That the only way you survived what you went through is that you held on to God's unchanging hands. And I come to tell you, God has a way. God has a way that when he comes in and turn your season of suffering around, you can't remember what the pain felt like. You can't remember the lonely nights. You can't remember the tear-stained pillows because God has a way of restoring what the canker worm and what the palmer worm ate up. Trust him. Hold on to God's unchanging hands and God will come in and turn things around. He'll give you strength to endure. I've seen it. I, I had to go through it. But I promise you, God and you can make it through it. And if you're in a season of suffering right now, all I can tell you, just hold on. Get up every morning and remind yourself who God is. Get up every morning and thank God that you're still breathing, that you still have a chance. Because I tell you, everybody got to go through something down here. And if you have not been through it, keep living. Your turn is coming. And that's why 
I keep my judgmental comments to myself. And I, I, I'm done. And the reason why is because I know how I was in my season of suffering. I know that there were days that I didn't want to talk to God. I know there were days I did not want to pray. There were days I wanted to go back and do it how I used to do it. Can I get some help up here? There were days I wanted to self-medicate myself and I reminded myself that when I didn't know God, I knew how to work out tough days. But I can tell you that God helped me to get through that tough day. And I'm standing here with some living testimonies that what the devil meant for evil. Can anybody give this God glory that God can do? Hold on his hands. And I don't know why we stop, and I know we are in a, a very contemporary society, but some, some of the songs we used to sing in church, it helped us. I, 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 mean, I mean, these songs now, they're cool, and you can bop with them, and you can do all your stuff, but it don't speak to your heart. But some of y'all remember growing up when old deacons would get up and say, hold to his hand. God's son changing hand. Anybody know it? If you know it, you can sing it. Hold to his hand. God's son changing hand. You better hold. your feet all over the house. I'm done. Stand to your feet all over the house. Maybe there's somebody out here you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You never, never ask him to come and live in your heart. Never ask him to save you. Today is a good day to come and grab the Lord's hand and allow him to take you from this place to glory. If you're out there, you never gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you now to just step out from where you are and make your way to the altar. If that's you, you want to be saved today. You want to repent of your sin and ask him to be Lord of your life. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, profess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Will there be one? Will there be one? Maybe out here you're already saved, but you need a church home out there you want to unite with the word of change and make this your church home you too step out from where you are come meet us here at the altar hallelujah will there be one maybe there's somebody out there that desire prayer maybe maybe God brought you out of your season of suffering maybe you're in the midst of your season of suffering come let's pray together let's pray together you don't have to tell your neighbor what you're going through. God already knows. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered, touching, and agreeing, he said, I'm in the midst. And that whatever you bind on heaven will be bound in earth. Maybe there's someone believing that this thing is too heavy to carry. And I know you've heard the lie before that God won't put no more on you than you can bear. That's a lie from the pits of hell. 
God would allow stuff to hit your life that will knock you to your knees, get you to the place where the only place you can do is look up. And what I've discovered is sometimes it takes some of us hitting the bottom for us to find God. We couldn't see him or appreciate him when we were on top. But when our lives get to the place we're on the bottom, our vision gets clearer. We begin to see who was for us and who was against us. We begin to, to hear what Big Mama and that old deacon, that old preacher used to say. Trust God. Give it all to God. Bring it to God. Tell him all about your trouble. He'll hear your faintest cry. And answer by and by. Because there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not when none else can heal all our sin diseases. Father, we thank you for being the God you are. God that is immutable. One who never changes. And God, we just want to pause to say thank you. And this life has a way, God, of dealing now some bad hands. Some folk in here, God, has went through the worst sickness of their life. But yet they made it. Some folk who had to say goodbye to loved ones, mama and brother and cousins and uncles and daddies. Though it felt like the worst thing of their life, God, you sustained them. Somebody in the midst of their, their struggle right now. God, may they find hope in this message. May they be encouraged to trust you when they can't see you. To trust you when they can't feel you. To trust you when they can't understand you. But God, there are living testimonies in this room that you are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a way maker. You are a bridge over troubled waters. God, you've been a lawyer in the courtroom. God, you've been a friend when we didn't have a friend. Father, you were peace when we could not sleep. Father, thank you for being everything that we need. Father, I pray that you give your people encouragement. May this be a reminder, God, that just because they're going through don't mean that you're mad at them. Don't mean that you don't love them. Don't mean that you don't want to use them. Just means, God, that we're human and we're living in a sin-sick world. But we have a God on our side. And we know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God, you made a promise to lift up a standard against it. You made a promise, God, that all things shall work together for the good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. God, we believe your word, and we're going to trust your word. So help us now as we gather. There may be somebody who's sick, struggling in their body, God. But you said, God, if there's any sick among us, call the elders. Anoint them with awe and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Heal right now, God. Deliver right now, God. Set free right now, God. Break bondages, God. Destroy yokes. Remove the addiction, God. Remove the anxiety. Remove the depression. Remove the thoughts of suicide. Give them joy. Give them peace. Give them clarity. Help them to realize that this is the day <laughs> that you have made 
May we all rejoice and be glad in it, God. Glad in it that we still have a God on our side. Glad that what we've been through didn't take us out, but God, we survived because of you. And we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Now, God, as we depart from this place, may your people feel your love. May they feel you near them. Thank you for the hands that gave and the hands that shall give. Bless it, break it, and multiply. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, your precious Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide on each and every one of us, his now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing week. Make sure you sign up.